Who killed Joseph Smith? That's an easy one. It was a mob that originated in Warsaw. And despite what some people have recently said, they've tried to revive some sort of insight theory. They're completely wrong. And I'm going to show you why. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Saints Unscripted. Caleb and I are here with Brian Stutzman, the author of The History of Warsaw, Illinois, which sounds like a book that history nerds would just gobble up. <laughs> so it sounds really interesting to me. You almost have to be. You know, a lot of people, both in the church and out of the church, go to Nauvoo and Carthage. But 18 miles south of Nauvoo is a town called Warsaw, Illinois. And about eight years ago, I got really interested in it because it's where the mob that killed Joseph Smith originated from. Yeah. And I couldn't believe there wasn't anything written. There's articles that I've written now and, and uh, the book and, and some other research I've done. And it really puts on end this revived theory that somehow the murder of Joseph Smith was an inside job by either Brigham Young or John Taylor or Willard Richards. It just doesn't hold water. What really happened is we had Nauvoo being settled from 1839 till, well, the Saints left in 1846. Mm -hmm. And so a seven year period, 18 miles south was this little river town called Warsaw. And the people today in Warsaw, as well as Carthage and Nauvoo are just great. But back then, Warsaw was a nemesis of Nauvoo. And as the church grew and Nauvoo grew, the hatred in Warsaw and Carthage grew at the same time. There was political pressures. In 1842, the people in Warsaw started a political party called the Anti-Mormon Political Party. We got a whole political party. Oh, wow. That's the church. <laughs> Very organized. And their goal was to keep the Mormon vote from taking over the county. There was economic pressures, political pressures, and then there was just pure jealousy of Joseph Smith and the leadership of the church. They recognized that Joseph Smith had power, position, status. And then when he declared for the presidency of the United States in 1844, that really set the locals off. And um, what happened next was, of course, a lot of people in the church know about the expositor and how the city council in Nauvoo met for three days, I think it was, and voted to destroy the expositor. Uh, the expositor was started by some dissidents, William Law and his brother Wilson and some other people who had left the church. They believed Joseph Smith had been a prophet. They believed in the scriptures. They believed in the divine calling of Joseph Smith, but they felt like he had uh, become a fallen prophet. So they started a new church called the Reformed Mormon Church. They got a press. They printed the expositor. One of the things it called for was the, um, the repeal of the Nauvoo Charter. And they called on mobs to, to attack Nauvoo. And that's why some of the reasons why the city council ordered the sheriff to destroy the expositor. So, sorry to interrupt you, but where does the... Uh... Does plural marriage enter this equation? Plural marriage That's does. Awesome. It was mischaracterized in the expositor. Okay. People, a lot of people today, it wasn't really talked about a lot. It, a lot of it was just plain temple ceilings. Uh, it was a religious ritual as uh, ordinance. But a lot of it was that this newspaper was inciting violence against. Inciting violence and uh, calling for the repeal of the, the Nauvoo Charter. And so when that was destroyed, one of the uh, Charles Foster, one of the publishers, one of the one of the people involved in the press camps, running 18 miles down to the Warsaw Signal, hands a letter into the the editor Thomas Sharp, and uh, Thomas Sharp publishes it the next day with a commentary under it. Actually, the, the day after he received it, uh, it was the 12th of, of June, and he said. Uh, Thomas Sharp, the editor of the Warsaw newspaper, said that there's uh, we, there's no time. This is this is horrible. I'm paraphrasing. Everybody must make their feelings known with powder and ball. Mm -hmm. And they talked about um, extermination. They used the word extermination, which was kind of a trigger word because the saints had been exterminated from Missouri, right? Yeah. And so what happens is Joseph goes to the jail. The people in Warsaw gather up into militias. A nearby militia from Green Plains comes over, little town there. There's three militia groups. We call them a mob. And on June 27th, 1844, they left Warsaw, went about halfway to a little place called Golden's Point. They had a meeting. The governor heard about it and told them to, to disband. One of the guards in the Carthage Gray, his name was Frank Worrell, he sent a note over to the mob. And he says, now's the time to do the deed, meaning to kill Joseph Smith. 
So they marched on, got there about 5.20 p.m., went up the stairs, and there was a firefight. Okay. Joseph, of course, Hiram was, was wounded and, and killed almost immediately. Um, John Taylor almost died. He had five shots. And Joseph eventually left the window and fell to the ground. Now, do you guys recall what Joseph said in the window as he left? Yes. Um, oh, man. Don't tell me. Don't tell me because it's significant. Um, I'll whisper. Yes, oh Lord, my God. Okay. Um, so what this tells us is that he was very much alive when he left the car, the bedroom in Carthage Shell. He wasn't killed by John Taylor Willard Richards. He was alive. Right. The, right. The he mob, gets shot through the window, right? Uh, he, he takes on four balls and he falls through the window. He's very much alive. They um, lean him up against the well and a firing squad finishes him off. And that's who killed Joseph Smith. And we know who's in the firing squad because that night they come back to the Warsaw house, in, which was a hotel, and brag about it. Uh, two days later in the newspaper, they talk about it. July 10th, Thomas Sharp writes that they regret having to do this murder, but they felt like they had to. It's for the greater good. It's mm -hmm. for the greater good. The next year they stand trial for it. Five people stood trial for the murder of Joseph Smith. The charges were a conspiracy to commit murder. But not once did they say, you know, we were kind of, Brigham Young kind of like, like paid us to do this, or John Taylor was in on it. Um, they need to be here at the trial because we don't want to be hung. Why would John Taylor and Willard Richards be in the bedroom and hold the door while moths were firing in if they were in on it? They would open the door, hold Joseph Smith and say, I got it. You know, let's, let's share in this bounty. Okay. The theory that other people besides a mob killed Joseph Smith is just hogwash, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't hold. So we can go on and, and, and say, and by the way, the people who are trying to promote this idea are, are mostly non-members who are trying to tear people's testimonies uh, away from, from what they were. And we know in the Bible, in Ephesians 4, that there'll be people who will lie in wait to deceive. In my opinion, these people are trying to deceive members of the church with falsehoods, half-truths, and logic that just doesn't work that's been debunked for many, many years. So if somebody asks you who killed Joseph Smith, I will tell you, it is a mob that originated from Warsaw that stood trial for it. They said that they were going to do it. That day they said they did it. And for the rest of their lives, they said they did it. Thank you so much for coming on the show and explaining the Warsaw mil uh, militia and who killed Joseph Smith. That was fascinating and really open my mind to it. Uh, make sure you check out uh, his book. Uh, leave any comments you have down below. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Come back for part two. <laughs>